Hi, this is Jason Yeo from Nutanix. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some cluster operation scenarios which will need to be followed up by some actions with virtual switches. In this scenario, it's about upgrading from a pre-5.19 AOS version. Let me start off by showing you that this is a 5-node cluster, following which I'll show you what is the network configuration I have on these hosts. You'll see that I have two bridges that's already configured, BR0 and BR1. Now, let's take a look into the details of the bridges. On the first node, I have BR0 that's configured as active backup. And for BR1, I have deliberately changed just this node to be balanced TCP with LACP. Now, looking at the next host, uh, which will be the same as the rest of the nodes in the cluster, uh, BR0 is the same with active backup and BR1 is also configured as active backup. Next is to do an AOS upgrade as normal and we'll skip ahead to when the process has completed. Here I've upgraded AOS to 5.19 as well as the corresponding AHV version. Let's take a look at the network dashboard and see what has changed. The general look and feel of this page is still pretty much the same. Uh, as you can see, there are now ports which are color-coded. As well, there's an additional button on the bottom left to uh, convert bridges to virtual switches. The left side of the screen now lists the virtual switches and you can toggle it to turn on and off the color coding. And if you drill into the details of a host, it still looks pretty similar as before, except now it lists its virtual switch name as well as a corresponding bridge name. As you can see here, VS0 was automatically created and mapped to BR0. A virtual switch was not created automatically for BR1. If your cluster has got more than one bridges, you have to go through a manual process to convert bridges to virtual switch. In this example, I'm going to convert BR1 into VS1. Once we hit convert, the task begins to convert the bridge into virtual switch. Let's wait for the task to complete and the task is completed and has failed. Let's see what has happened. And you can see the reason it has failed is because one of the nodes has an inconsistent configuration with the rest. Now you can see this process want to ensure that all the nodes have a consistent configuration. So what we have to do is to kind of fix that and then restart the process. I have now made node 1 to be consistent with the rest of the nodes, removing LACP and replacing it with active backup. Now let's try to convert BR1 again to VS1. While we let the task run, let me dive into what we have seen so far. Uh, we have seen that the new uh, virtual switch construct, it is actually a management overlay. The actual switching is still done by bridges under the hood. And so the conversion is merely just creating the management overlay. Now, as such, if we do not do the conversion process, there is no impact to the virtual machine operations. Virtual machines connected to BR1 would still function as normal. The advantage of the conversion process is that once complete, it allows us management capabilities for all virtual switches beyond just VS0. And as the task completes, let's have a look at our new virtual switch. Let's head back to the network dashboard. As you can see here, now VS1 has been created and it now has a color coding of green. I can toggle that and so we'll see which other ports related to VS1. Let's take a look at the network settings page. As you can see, our networks have been imported successfully as indicated by the VS1 label in the virtual switch column. This is the end of the AOS upgrade scenario. In this scenario, we'll look at adding a new node to the existing cluster. The existing cluster has got two virtual switches, VS0 and VS1, each with two uplinks. To keep the expansion process neat, I'm going to prepare the new node to only include the two uplinks into the default BR0. I will SSH into the CVM of the new node and configure the network accordingly. As you can see, I'm using the manage OVS commands and I'm going to take out the links which are not used for BR0. At this point, it's normal to see some of these errors because the script is trying to contact a database, but however, because the node is not part of a cluster, 
there's no database for it to connect to. Eventually, just get uh, to the point to click yes to proceed. Once again, we use the manage OVS command to check if the configuration has been updated. Next, I'm going to perform a cluster expansion. And for this video, I'm just going to skip ahead to the end of the process. Here we are waiting for the final add node task to complete. Let's go to the hardware dashboard and have a quick look. There we go. Um, node 8 is the one we've just added. Everything looks good. Now let's take a look at the network settings. Let's take a look at the virtual switches. Uh, as you can see, VS0 looks okay. There's no alert next to it. Um, let's have a look into the details. What we want to see is the NIC configuration in, in, in terms of the uplink. We can see that there are two ports uh, that we have selected previously uh, already included, and this is good. Next, let's take a look at the network page. As you can see, uh, Node 8 has got the two purple ports for VS0, but it has got nothing for VS1. So we'll have to configure that manually. We see that there's a little red alert next to the VS1. Let's take a look at what it's about. Now this alert is basically saying there is an inconsistent configuration within the cluster that not uh, all the nodes has got VS1 configured. What we shall do next is to remediate the alert. Let's edit VS1. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use Quick, but by all means for your production environment, please use Standard. That's the recommended. And what I'm going to do now is to add the two ports uh, related to node 8 into the VS. Uh, as you can see, ETH 2 and 3 are not selectable because they already belong to a different VS. Once I hit save, it will proceed to apply the configuration to the cluster in a rolling manner. You can follow the progress on the task screen. And now the task is completed. Now let's go to the network screen and take a look at what we can see. Yeah, the network dashboard, if we go down to node number 8, we can see now the first two ports have been included into VS1, indicated by the green color. This is the end of the scenario. Thank you for watching.